Welcome to this review. I have finally done it. I have finally finished the Pendragon book series. And my heart is broken because it's done. It's... Jesus, my bangs. It, it's over. I've done it. This is, this is the review for book 9, Raven's Rise, and book 10, The Soldier of Hala. Now, it's a good thing I did finish this because the book, the library in my town, has been uh, temporarily shut down for mold in the building. It's a good thing they don't sell food. Um, but anyway, so Raven's Rise was a book that uh, kept me on my kept me on the edge the whole entire time, up until the end, up until it set up for this book. The final Pendragon novel is here. Um, Raven's Rise was the uh, penultimate book, and uh, he made a very um, valid. Uh, reason or point to point that out in his what's it called preface yeah, it's preface and he tells you what it is even after he tells you to look it up and then he congratulates those who look it up congratulates those who already knows it and says uh well then you you lazy folks all right there i mean i'll tell you it's the second to last that's what penultimate means the second to last in whatever series game you name it, like, um, I'm trying to think of an example here, but I can't, because none of my video games are pen ultimates, to my knowledge, anyway, but 10 books, Confusing as hell. Oh, okay. The concept of Hala, all the worlds, what it's made up out of, what powers it, and everything that goes into that. I've got to stop hitting the desk. Is confusing to say the least. And Saint Dane doesn't make things easier by being one of the most manipulative, conniving persuasive villains I've ever had the pleasure to read. I'm not gonna lie, I really love Saint Dane as a villain. Cause he's original. Cause this whole series is, oh my gosh, it's just, it's my middle finger. How about this? Oh, it, it stays on my right hand pretty well. It'd be a pain to take off, but. Um, but yeah, you got Bobby, and you got Press. Press Tilton. His first name is Press, yes, I know. Oh yeah, I did shave. That's a thing. I can feel the stubble. It's honestly a feeling that I always just enjoy. I don't know. Ignore me? No, please don't. Um, but yeah, the whole concept of Hala and everything, and I love Bobby Pendragon as a character. He's arguably one of my favorite characters I've ever read in a book. And y'all know how much I ship Bobby and Courtney over Bobby and Lore. And there's one part in the beginning where Lore said they were meant to be, and Osa didn't deny it. But throughout the book, they gave subtle hints more towards Bobby and Courtney than Bobby and Lore. Because at the end of the book nine, it was focused around the fact that Bobby and Lore were going to get together and be together and, you know, all that good stuff. But in book ten, it led more towards Bobby and Courtney in the, end, in the middle and the end, once Courtney actually comes into the book. Because Mark and Courtney, okay, Mark comes into the book fairly quickly, quickly than you more, more quickly than you actually realize when you're reading it. But you don't know it's him. You no, know what I'm saying. 
anyway, Mark comes into the picture fairly quickly. And so he's kind of like the main side character. He's, he's the main character, but you know what I mean. He's the main one in the beginning, and then towards the end, or no. And then in the middle, okay, in the beginning, it's not really about Mark. In the beginning, it's about them learning about Hala, how they came to be, what their goal was, how St. Dane came to be, what St. Dane was, how he got to where he was, what he is about, how he does the thing he does. And then once you get more towards like the 100 page mark, Mark comes into play. <laughs> accidental pun is accidental, but it more than welcome. Um, it comes into play. And then after Mark's whole section is done, where it's more on Mark, <clears throat> you know, being the leader of the rebels and everything. And then once he finds out where the exiles are, because the exiles are very, very important, he goes to Elon. And then, then Courtney kind of takes over. And not Mark. And then at the end, it's both of them. At the end, it's all of them. Literally, all of them. All the travelers. With press. I think there's ten of them. Yeah, Bobby. Lore. Spader. Gunny. Siri. Ellie. Alder. Press. Asia. There's another one. Patrick. Ten. There's ten. Yep, definitely ten. Okay, so you have that. All ten of them, plus Mark and Courtney, plus Boone, if you remember him from book five. Blackwater, um, when they went to Elon, the cat planet, the Kree planet, as they're called there. Anyway, but yeah, the the series in general is full of twists that keep you going and keep you on your edge of your seat, and it's just, it's fantastic. It's amazing, really. It's one of my favorite book series of all time. Top five. Top five for sure. Not number one, because, you know, Percy Jackson's always going to be in that spot. From now on to the rest of my life. Percy Jackson will be my number one book series. But, I do believe this book is the number two contender. Um, with Chronicles of Nick. Uh, let's see, Virals is good. I don't think I've done one on Virals yet. I should. Um, but yeah. The book series, all of the books, are just full of plot twists till the end. Except for this book. It kind of wraps it all up nicely. In one little package saying, here you go. It's ended. But it sets it up to where it's like... <clears throat> to where if you were to revisit the series... It would kind of feel like a continuation. It's weird to think about it, but if you actually read the book and read to the end, you'll know what I mean. But it is. And 37 journals? That's I think that's probably more than any other of the travelers. Well, considering he's the lead traveler, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, so, there was that, and... The characters. Press is an amazing character. Um, all the characters are unique. They're different. They all have a different personality. They all have a different um, set of skills. They're just all unique in their own way. They all look different, obviously, but I mean vastly different. Like, you have Bobby from Second Earth, the teenager. Um, you have Patrick, who's the teacher librarian from Third Earth. You have Gunny, who's the old man from First Earth. You have Lore, who's the badass fighter from Zadah. You have Siri, who's the young 
pretty much the runt of the litter. Um, because his dad died in the seventh book. Spoiler. But I think I already mentioned that in the Quillian Games one. Um, series like the runt kid of the group, the naive one. I guess you could say who's anti or impatient. Adra Killian from Vlox. Oh yeah, series from a uh, Abara. Yeah, that's what it is. Adra's the Asia's the smart, cunning one who is pretty much intelligent and is strategic and all that. Coming from Vlox, the uh, heavily influenced area, you know. Um, Ellie from Quillian, who was the old woman. I got pretty sure she was older than, you know, Gunny, the 65-year-old man, or the almost 65-year-old man. Um, Neva Winter, the uh, daughter of Ellie from... She has a big part to play in this book that is twisting till the end, honestly. Uh, well, not the end, but it's twisting until... Up until you meet Courtney, like she's she just consistently surprises you up until the moment, and she's like Asia, like Asia and Neva or Neva are kind of like the same in, in general because they're both smart, they're both cunning, they're both strategic in that that way. Like the both of their skill sets are kind of the same. Um. If I'm Spader from Chloral, he's the adventurous kind of guy. <clears throat> the adventurous, happy go lucky spirit member of the group from Chloral. And you have Alder from Dendron, who's the big, strong guy who's not too shabby with the fighting either because he's a knight. Or as knightly as you get. And then you have Bobby, who's the heart and soul and the glue, the leader of the group. And then you have Press, who's kind of like the the wiser overseer, making sure they don't get out of hand, get out of line, you know. Don't destroy, don't destroy this place now. If you do, we lose. And you have St. Tane, the most manipulative, conniving, persuasive. <clears throat> but he does it through fear. Because he has the dados to control them or to incite this fear to make them kind of play along with it. Not really play along, but to buy into what he's saying. He's kind of like Hitler in a way. But uh, St. Dane, being St. Dane, much more powerful, stronger, and more influential. Which is unfortunate. Uh, but th both of the books like had twists going... And going plot twists that just make you go, wait, what? That that happened? Really? You sure? You sure? That's ca canon? Uh, especially Raven's Rise, considering it's the penultimate. It's leading up to the final book. Like, at the end of Raven's Rise, you think, what's the point of another book? And then Press tells you the most important thing that he said in one of the very first books. If not the first book. You cannot defeat Saint Dane by killing him. You can only defeat Saint Dane when he thinks he has won. That was a very big foreshadowing statement, and I'll leave it at that. But in the end, Saint Dane is one of the most impressive villains I've read in a book series. Also, Bobby is just one of the most likable protagonist I've ever read and it's full of humor <laughs> like the book is deep it's humorous especially Bobby Bobby Pendragon is one of the most humorous characters I've ever read he rivals Percy Jackson even with his sarcasm but the humor never fails it's always on point which is impressive um like that's one thing I look forward to in books is the humor and how it affects or and how they go about their humor because humor is a big part of who I am in general. 
And Bobby just epitomizes that. No. He's awesome. He's great. He's good. And the book series is amazing. 10 out of 10. I, I give the books series 10 out of 10. Book 10. 10. I'm going to leave it at that. You want to know more? Look up DJ McHale. The most amazing author. Okay, probably not the most amazing author, but one of the most amazing authors. One of the most talented writers I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Even if um, he does have his editors and all that stuff, and his wife, to keep him straight. What makes sense? What's a no-go? Uh, uh -oh. Keeping the book series strong, you know? So look up DJ McHale, you know, read more books by him. I haven't. I probably will, maybe. I don't know if I ever see one by him, and it's not book five of 15 Uh, <laughs> book series, Pin Dragon. 10 out of 10. Love the book series. All the books were great. Plot twists up until the end, keeping you on the edge of your seat. The exciting action is amazing. The tenseness. Um, the romance? Well, not as, it's not as, it's not as prominent as in most book series. Like, with Percy Jackson, there was that strong romance going on between Percy and Annabeth. They don't have that in this book series because in Percy and Annabeth's case, they go on the adventure together and they have time to bond and all that stuff. While in this book's case, Courtney's stuck on Second Earth and being an acolyte or an acolyte while Bobby's traveling worlds. And then you have Lore, who's only in the first book. She's in the sixth book. Not in the seventh, she's not in the eighth. She's in the ninth, at the very end, in the tenth book, at the very beginning. So, I mean, at least they established both of his love interests in the very first book. But it's hard for him to keep that romance going on through that. Like, the biggest romance they could have is Courtney's feelings and his feelings towards them both in the journals and. Courtney's feelings when she's, you know, doing her whole thing. And then there's, um, there's, not many, there's, there's really just not much romance going on here. But even with the lack of romance, I, I was still drawn to the book. Like that. It's a good book. You should always go find this book. If, maybe not this book if, if, if you haven't read Raven's Rise. Go find The Merchant of Death. You know, that's a book. If you found that and you've read that, so go read The City of Far. Or The Lost City of Far. If you've read that, The Never War, or. Is it The Never War? Yeah, that's right, The Never War. Then if you found that and you haven't read on the, the reality book, you know, that's where you go next. And if you, uh, you didn't go to the reality book, or you stopped at the reality book, I highly consider continuing on to Blackwater. It's, it's honestly amazing. Riveting stuff. Um, the, the Rivers of Zadar. Yeah, no, that's next. Go straight there after Blackwater. It's a, it's, it's a great detour to the left, you know. Um, then you can go to... Book 8, The Pilgrim's Rise. Wait, no, 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 Book 7. Don't go Don't go from 6 to 8, go from 6 to 7. The Quillian Games, which is honestly an amazing book. Uh, it's a different concept on the games thing that I went over. Awesome. Uh, then you go to Pilgrim's Rise, which completely turns the series upside down. You know, and then, and then Ravens. Raven's Rise? No, no. The Pilgrims of Rain. I don't know, I got that mixed up. Eight's Pilgrims of Rain is, which is Raven's Rise, you know. Completely blows your mind, and then book ten completely decimates your mind. Yeah. 
9 blows it, and then 10 decimates it with the answers. Yeah. So I highly recommend it. If you liked the video, give it a like. Comedy field, that'd be super special. Awesome. And subscribe. Ta-ta. For now.